And you can see nickel is the cheapest and the highest energy density, and that's why increasing nickel is a goal of ours and really everybody's in the energy in, in the uh, battery industry. At a kind of a three-tiered approach to, to batteries, um, so starting with iron, that's kind of like a medium range, and then nickel manganese as sort of a medium plus uh, intermediate, um, and then high nickel for long range applications like Cybertruck and uh, the semi. It's uh, relatively straightforward to do a cathode that's uh, two thirds nickel, one third manganese, uh, which would then allow uh, us to make 50% more uh, cell volume uh, with the same amount of nickel. 35% of the cathode dollar per kilowatt hour is just in transferring it into its final form. And so we see that as a big target and we, we decided to take that on. Obviously we're going to go and start building our own cathode facility in North America and leveraging all of the North American resources that exist for nickel and lithium. And just doing that, just localizing our cathode supply chain and production, we can reduce miles traveled by all the materials that end up in the cathode by 80%, which is huge for cost. Cathode production would be part of our, the, te the Tesla cell production plant. So it would just be, you know, basically, you know, uh, raw materials coming from the mine, and uh, from raw materials in the mine, out comes a battery. and welcome to our Minds and Money 5 at 5 show. This week it's sponsored by RK Equity in association with the Resource Global Network. Howard founded uh, the Petites Capital Markets advisory firm, RK Equity in 2002. He has over 25 years of capital markets and investing experience across multiple investment themes and natural resources. Thanks all for coming. We're just gonna start with a few of RK Equity's uh, takeaways from Battery Day. High nickel cathode uh, demand dominates uh, Tesla, you know, until they introduce a $25,000 car and mass energy storage takes off. For nickel, we did talk about reducing, you know, steps in the nickel processing. The beneficiaries of Battery Day are on this panel in our view, you know, high grade nickel sulfide deposits in the US and Canada. I'm also, uh attracted to sulfide nickel projects. Uh, sulfide nickel projects, when you find them, are enormous money spinners. The difficulty is that they're fairly tough to find. Uh, and certainly, while I understand that uh, there is ongoing demand for laterite nickels, too, uh, coming out of the Philippines and Indonesia, what I'm particularly interested in is high-quality, high-grade sulfide nickel deposits, uh, which I think in almost any market make investors a lot of money. Okay, Rodney, Rick Rule is uh, stating a preference for sulfides over laterites. Why? Uh, in short, uh, high nickel sulfides uh, are more expensive to mine, but much cheaper to process, and, and laterites cheaper to, to mine and more expensive to process. If you look at the capital intensity of doing a sulfide mine, it's typically, say, twelve to $15,000 a ton. Laterites can run as high as 60000 um, and then on an OPEX side, uh, sulfides are lower. Typically, the deposits are smaller, the sulfides, but they have high R IRRs. And if you can stand, extend the mine life, they, uh, they turn out to be very good deposits. So you tend to find that they can pay at, um, at much lower nickel prices. And then the other benefit they have is... Um, with a, nickel, with a high nickel sulfide, you make a nickel concentrate, something between 10 and 20 percent, and that can be either sold to, um, to you know, if you look at someone like uh, Tesla that's looking to jump straight uh, through the processing techniques, straight to uh, some kind of precursor or sulfate, um, or you can sell it to um, the smelters in Sudbury. So you've got some competitive tension on the product. Why do the uh, Sudbury uh, smelters uh, need this? Pre-2000, most of nickel came from sulfides. Um, since then, the evolution, you know, when nickel hit $50,000 a ton, in came uh, nickel pig iron and ferro-nickel, much lower grade to be used in stainless steel. So laterites uh, were, became uh, competitive. And uh, the contribution of nickel sulfides to the total amount of nickel mined 
uh, is dropping every year. And basically, uh, you know, those mines, as I said, aren't as big sulfide. So they, some of them are, you know, are, uh, are closing. So, you know, smelters in Sudbury are running out of feedstock. So uh, there are less and less sulfide deposits being found and less and less operating. So uh, they now need to, you know, find whatever feedstock they can. Drew Baglino was talking about shortening supply chains uh, in, at the beginning of that, and everything is kind of moving to high nickel. Um, we're only at three percent, you know, global penetration, and people are worried about kind of critical minerals. So what, what does this mean if uh, there, there's this mass increase in, in nickel intensity? It's, it's going to be, a, you know, competitive in terms of you know who needs what material. The incredible properties that nickel has in terms of uh, range. Uh, and other attributes for the lithium ion battery. The rate of change, you know, historically nickels had a 4% growth rate in, you know, or less in terms of annual demand. And suddenly you are looking at, you know, a quantum bigger if the EV adoption starts to hit the uh, S curve and really take off. And someone like Tesla who wants to use the high nickel for the very in energy uh, density sensitive applications like the semi and the cyber truck those are going to you know a per vehicle is certainly in the semi it's going to need an enormous amount of nickel so it can make a meaningful contribution in a short space of time we are the tamarack project uh, we are located in minnesota in the u.s um, the Tamarack project, just a bit of background, it's a high grade nickel sulfide project. Our partner on the project is Rio Tinto, our group Talon Metals. We are currently the manager operator of the project. In terms of what you're looking at here on the slides, so if you, if, if you look to the far right, what you see is you see a huge 18 kilometer intrusive complex that, that is Tamarack. Um, and just to the left of it, just by way of illustration only, um, I'm showing you one of the most prolific nickel producers in the world today, Talnec, uh, based in Russia. And as you can see at Talnec, very similar in terms of scale with several mines along the intrusion. At the Tamarack project, uh, to date, we have defined a, a resource, but that resource, as you can see, again, looking at the right, only covers about a sliver of the uh, 18 kilometers. Um, what's really exciting about the project in terms of future scale potential is that we've drilled you know, in some cases, three kilometers to the north of our resource, and we've hit high-grade nickel copper mineralization. And similarly, we've gone uh, more than a kilometer to the south, and we've also hit high-grade mineralization. So there's quite a bit of evidence that there's uh, additional mineralization along the uh, 18 kilometers. Uh, we currently have about 3.6 million tons in the indicated category at a grade of 2.45% nickel equivalent. And then in the inferred category, approximately an additional 4.4 million tons at uh, just over 2.1% nickel equivalent. Just to help calibrate that for everyone in terms of what that means, if you look at the average global nickel grade for underground mines, it's currently just above 1%. So this truly is a really high grade project. In terms of what that means, high grade, simple recoveries like Tamarack, it essentially means you're looking at a project that's going to be at the lower end of the cost curve, uh, a project that could work in uh, virtually any uh, nickel environment, including at current uh, prices. A couple of things I just want to mention about the uniqueness of the project. Uh, first of all, very notable that the project is in the United States. Um, currently within the U.S., there is only one existing operating nickel mine. It's called the Eagle Mine in Michigan. Um, it's owned by the Lundin Group, and it is expected to be fully mined out by 2025. After Eagle, in terms of what's left in the United States, there's Tamarack. Um, as, of, as far as we're aware at the moment, uh, we would be the only one. So that, from a strategic standpoint, makes us very relevant, especially to the discussion of a domestic uh, supply chain uh, within the United States for the EV sector. One other thing I'll mention that's unique about us because we're high grade, because we'll be a low cost producer, while I recognize that we're obviously talking about Tesla tonight and some of the impacts from battery day, the reality is we are not dependent upon the EV market to be successful. Um, we believe that there will be a tug of war between the EV manufacturers, the stainless steel manufacturers, and even the battery manufacturers for the product 
that will be ultimately produced from tamarack. So what you're looking at is at the top, you're looking at the current nickel supply chain for batteries. And you've probably heard a lot of talk that the current supply chain is very inefficient. Well, what do, what do we mean by that? Well, first of all, the, the, the supply chain really was built for the stainless steel market and not for batteries. And so we believe there's a number of steps that can be cut out along the way. And again, that's something that Elon Musk had mentioned as well. Talon and a Tamarack, what we're striving against this has been our strategy for quite a while now, is if we're going to go the EV route, we believe we can cut out a number of those steps and essentially go from a concentrate to what we're calling a nickel battery product, whether that be a sulfate or a precursor or something else. Thanks very much, Sean. Uh, that last slide where you cut out those three steps uh, seems uh, very interesting. And as uh, Elon you know, talked about, you know, how far a nickel needs to kind of travel, you know, if they come up with some kind of solution to eliminate a number of the steps, uh, that clearly will be less cost and, and, and more sustainable. Mm -hmm.